Gail Blevins led the University of Iowa softball program from 1998 to 2010. She is the all-time winningest coach in program history, compiling a 903 wins, 424 losses, and one tie record in 23 years. She led the Hawkeyes to four Women's College World Series appearances in 1995, 96, 97, and 2001. Five Big, time, five big Ten regular season titles in 1989, 1990, 97, 2000, and 2003 and two Big Ten tournament championships in 2001 and 2003. She was named Big Ten Coach of the Year in 1989, 1997, and 2000, and remains the fifth winningest coach in NCAA history, totaling 1,245 wins in 31 years. Recently, Coach Blevins was inducted into the University of Iowa Athletic Hall of Fame. Coach, Coach Blevins' record is impressive. The reason for her success is her understanding of how to motivate students to achieve greatness. Please give Coach Blevins your attention and give her a Mustang welcome. Thanks, Mackenzie. It's a pleasure to be here this morning, and uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, Mac and I do go all way, way back. I think maybe when she was about seven years old, the first time I ever had a chance to work with her, and I was still coaching at Iowa. Known the Hupke family a long, long time. And so when Mr. Hupke asked me to come up and to speak, of course I would say yes. Um, I, I live in Iowa. I coached in Iowa for 23 years. I still live here. I love Iowa. And I love the people of Iowa. And so it's an honor for me to be here today to present to your school. We're going to talk a little bit about respect, a word that you know very well. The important thing that I would ask for you to think about today is, do you live it well? Do you live it well? So let's take a look at what we've got here. Respect. What's it look like? And you see so many forms of respect in your daily life. You see them all the time. Or you might see the other side of that, which is the disrespect. But what does respect look like? I would tell you first, respect begins with you and with me. It begins with us, with all of us in this room. And that's an important thing to remember. It is something that we share, a bond that we have, or a connection that we have to one another. Respect means that we value each other. It's not just valuing the people in this room that are your very dearest friends. It's valuing everyone in this room, including your teachers, your administrators, your staff, and all the students that are a part of this, of this great school. When I walked into school, you know, I saw the pictures online as I would put my presentation together, and I looked at pictures of your school online. And I don't know if you've ever looked at the YouTube video when the school is being built. And if you haven't, you need to look at it because it doesn't do justice to what I experienced when I walked through the door and came into your school. It just grabbed me. I just thought, what an incredibly positive environment for these young people to have a chance to go to school. It's a great, great environment for you. I'm sure you know the name Albert Einstein all too well. And he always was about people and relationships. And he said, I spoke to everyone. I speak to everyone in the same way, whether he's the garbage man or he's the president of a university. The title means nothing. It's all about valuing people. And we have a chance to do that every day. OK, now some questions. I'm going to do a little interaction here. There might be a time where I'll ask you a question. If someone wants to give me an answer, that'd be great, because I still feel like it's an environment that we can do that in. How many of you belong to a club? to a team, to any organization here at the school. Put your hands up. Awesome. OK, that's a lot of people. Very good. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to refer to clubs and organizations or, or teams. I'm going to start calling all of you as teams. Because first of all, you all belong to one really big team. What's that team? What is it? Say it. The Mustangs. So you are all a part of the first big team, which is the Mustangs. And that's the important team. And all the others are too. But you all need to realize that even if you didn't put your hands up on a club, you still belong to a team. You're part of this team. You're part of the, of the, the Mustangs. All right, so I'm just going to show some pictures. I went on and got line, got a few pictures. And I'm sorry if I didn't get your club up or your team up. Um, but I just wanted to have some opportunity to put up things that happen across the school. 
The National Honor Society. Who's a member of the National Honor Society? Put your hands up. Awesome, awesome. I mean, that's a, that's a great club, and it's something that you had to work hard to achieve to be a part of. Beyond the National Honor Society, who belongs to speech? Do you know that's like one of the most powerful things you can do as a young person is belong in a speech club? Because when you first stand up here the first time, and I thought, Mackenzie, you did really well with that, it's a little frightening, right? But then as you get into that club and you gain some confidence and you learn and you, and you get opportunities to speak, it gets easier and easier. And before you know it, I can remember when I graduated from high school and I had a speaking engagement for our graduation. And the lights were down and it was a big auditorium. It was, everything was black except for the spotlight on you and a, and a uh, you know, microphone in front of you, no notes, and you spoke. And I remember when I was done, I didn't want to sit down. It was so powerful. It kind of opened my eyes to what could be ahead. And, and I think about that now. So those of you that are in speaking, speech club, what a neat thing to help you prepare you for life. Athletics. Who's on an athletic team here? Hands up. Awesome. And I'm sorry I didn't get all the teams up. I kept searching and searching, but they'll see, you'll see some other pictures that will pop up here too. But athletics. What, a, what a, another opportunity for great opportunities for teams here. Who is a part of the Silver Cord program right now? I'm going to tell you what, of all the things I saw online, that was the thing that really got me right here. Because I thought, wow, the school is teaching people how to serve, which good schools do, by volunteering, by making a difference in somebody's life. And isn't it fun that when you graduate, you get to have that cord around your neck, and people will know what that means. It talks a lot about um, your years of service and all the things you did for your community, for your school. That's pretty powerful. Volunteering is a powerful thing. Makes you feel good, too. Music. Wow, music. Hands up. You, you have an unbelievable musical pro, uh, program. I walked back behind your stage here and looked at everything back there. I don't remember ever seeing a facility like that and anything that I was ever aligned with. I was one of those people that had friends that were musicians. I was the one pe person you probably didn't want in the music because I wasn't very good at what I tried to do, but I really appreciated all the people that were good musicians because that's a talent. And I know musicians, like when I watched this weekend, when I saw the Iowa, Iowa State bands on the field, because I was at the game, watched the game, and then they had the jumbotrons, and they'd shoot up really high and show all their formations, and I thought, look at the precision that all those young people have to go through. You put as much time in as any other club in your school here, and it speaks volumes about what you're able to achieve. So kudos to you. All right, FFA, hands up. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. I mean, there's so many neat clubs here and so many opportunities. And it's all about finding your niche, finding the thing that really speaks to your heart, like what's important to you. And, and that's wonderful. That's another great club. So what, does it, what comes with being a part of your club? What comes with it? Be it mentoring program, the AV program, and Travis, where are you? Travis, you did a great job getting me set up today. And boy, you know how important it is to have great technology in your school, and you probably have state-of-the-art technology in this school, which is amazing. What does it come with being a part of a team? What kind of responsibilities do you have? Because when you become aligned with something, even if it's the big team, the Mustang team, there come with that responsibilities. First one, you make a commitment. You're going to be there. You're going to help make that club, that team, better by your presence. You take on responsibility. It might be serving in, in an off, as an officer or you're there as a worker for a project or a fundraiser, something that you're doing for your school. You're dependable. People in the club, including your advisor, knows they can depend upon you. They know that. And that makes their job and their experience all the more positive. And you're respectful. You're respectful of the environment. You're respectful of the people who worked to create the opportunities that you have, and probably lots of people that came before you that created an even better opportunity for you. So that's, that's kind of what being a part of a club or a team looks like. I thought what I'd do is share with you a little bit of my experience at Iowa and let you see a little bit of what it looked like. And this was Pearl Field where I worked my last, uh, well actually the, the, the facility changed dramatically during the time that I was there. Um, my, this was, uh, I finished in 2010, so this was my next, uh, my third year from uh, retiring out. This was our reg NCAA regional that we hosted. And if this could have been a panoramic shot, which I, could, I wish it could have been, 
you see the stands, and people are standing up above because there just aren't any seats, they eventually quit taking a gate because they didn't have a place to put people, and they just let people come in and stand every which way. If we'd had a panoramic shot and shot all the way around the field, people were standing everywhere. We had additional seats down the line, but people were standing everywhere. And I remember the day before we hosted, I told my team, I said, be prepared. This is going to be a week where you're going to have tremendous support. Tremendous support. Because people in this community, they loved our team. They loved following the Hawkeyes. And we had a very successful program. They loved that. And I said, you're going to see people pushing baby carriages. You're going to see people coming in with everything. And sure enough, as we were warming up on one of the other fields, and they opened all the gates, it was amazing watching people flow into the place. And I know several times I'd see my athletes turn around and look. And it was just like what we talked about. It was going to be amazing. Why? Because people valued what we did. We respected our public. And we, we did a lot of good things for the community. And they respected us. This was our mission statement. This is what we tried to make sure we lived every day. I'm not going to read it to you. You can just look at it. But it just spoke to what's going to be, how, how do we go about doing what we do on a daily basis? What's it going to look like? And then once you have a statement like that, you have to commit to something that you're going to do. You have to have a daily plan. And this was our daily plan. First thing, everybody dedicated themselves to the team. Nobody on our team was more important than the whole team. Nobody was above the rules. Everybody was a part of the total buy-in. We were all a part. We were all of value to the team. Everybody stayed focused on the present. OK, now you think, what does that mean? If you had something with your team or your club that happened last weekend, and it was a really good thing, and you've got something coming up this next week that you're going to build upon, staying present means bringing that experience forward, learn from it, and then be present right here and make today even better. All right, that's staying present. Everybody competed through the highs and lows. How many of you have had good moments in your teams and your clubs and not so good moments? Everybody has, right? All of you uh, teachers and staff that are here, how many of you, and you turn around and look at this when I ask them this question, how many of you have had difficult moments in your personal lives as well as great moments? Look at them. And look up here. I got my hand up too. Because guys, that's a life skill. That's a life skill. You're going to have challenges on your teams. They're small challenges compared to challenges that are going to be ahead in your life. So the most important thing is learn from them and help, let them help you grow as a person and become stronger. So competing. Respect everyone. Respect everyone. Now, uh, the younger kids that were in the assembly before talked about this. We talked about it, we use the analogy like with an athletic team. If another team put a statement up about you, about your school, about your team, and disrespected your team, what would happen with that? Who wants to tell me? What would happen? If you're getting ready to compete, yes. Okay, you might get mad. What else? What else? Okay, so they got mad. You might get angry about it. What else? You lose respect. You'd lose respect maybe for the other uh, team. Yes, in the back. You say it a little bit louder, hon. Just a little louder. You might become a little bit apprehensive about it, a little bit afraid of it. OK. Who's a coach in here? Coaches, what would you do? Who's the coach? And you just read it. It was in the paper. And someone trash-talked your program. Who's a coach? Who wants to share? What would you do, sir? You know the neat thing with having pictures on our camera now? Quick little shot, quick little print, and quick little up in the locker room. Right? And every one of you that are on that team will walk by you know, and go right to your locker, and boy, just like, all right, I'm so ready for practice today. I am so ready. Because you use it. You use it to drive your behavior. You don't get on and do something inappropriate. You don't respond by saying something stupid back. You just use that. And you, I can't tell you how many times through the years we did that very thing. Put something up because someone said something not very complimentary about our team. And that's okay, because our team went out 
and we, we evened the score on the field. We didn't have to say it with anything we did. We did it with our, with our actions. Demonstrate a never give up attitude when you're part of a team. That's what I always admired about all good teams I've ever watched, good, good clubs, whatever. If they have a hard time, they go through a difficult moment, never giving up, finding a way to battle back and to be even better for what you just went through. That's big. And here's what's powerful. You said that you're all a team, you're all Mustangs. There's one name on the front of that jersey or the one name that is on the front of that band uniform or somewhere. And it says Independence, or it says Mustangs, yes? One name. It doesn't say your personal name. It doesn't give that. It talks about team. And so always remembering that that's who you play for, and that was important for us. We had core values, and um, I would venture to say, because I saw things hanging, your banners hanging in the hallway, that these look very familiar to you. Respect, trustworthiness, responsibility, Hawkeye heart, commitment, and family. And I'll just show you a quick little clip. And this is just a couple of my athletes. Um, and they were, we were at a uh, meet the team night. And these were young kids, like junior high and grade school kids that came to that meet the team night. And I, you, you know this, those of you that are in any club, if you're on the marching band or the jazz band or whatever, there are young kids that admire you, that watch you, that emulate you, that someday want to be in your, your position. They want to be there. And so you're a model for them. And so these young women were from our community, and they came to our community to, to have a chance to meet their favorite teams. Respect is be, be aware that there's going to be differences on your team. We're not all going to agree on everything. Isn't that true? Do you agree on everything with your best friends? Do you? No. It's okay, because that's what allows us to be friends, too, is the differences. It's not like everything has to be the same. Deal positively when we have conflict, and I'll show you what that looks like, and be considerate of other people. Let's go on. Trustworthiness. Be honest. And I've got some great examples of where this breaks down a little bit later in the presentation. Be honest. Be dependable. Do what you say you're going to do. Demonstrate courage to do the right thing. Here's a courageous moment. What happens if you walk out of here today and maybe you're in the cafeteria and you're having lunch and you're sitting with someone and they make a really inappropriate comment about somebody else sitting at the, uh, across from you, maybe at another table or something like that. Here's what you can do. You can choose to sit there quietly or you can laugh because you're uncomfortable with it or you can somehow let them know in some fashion, even though it involves a little courage to do this, you don't appreciate that statement. Sometimes by not saying things, we support it. And one of the most powerful things to do is to let people know when they're doing things that are just disrespectful to someone else. And, and it, it can be a way to help get people off of that track, off of that line. Stand by your team. Be responsible. Do what you say you're going to do. If you're self-disciplined, you make life so much easier for all of your teammates, your coaches, your administrators, your directors. You make life a lot easier for everyone because they don't have to take that on because you're responsible. You choose to do it. And that very last point there is huge. If we could get everybody to stop and think before they choose to say something or tweet something, all right, stop and think about it before you put it up there because once you put it up there, it's up there. All right? That's just a great way to keep yourself out of a bad spot. Hawkeye heart. I love this because this defined who we were at Iowa. It defined us. So you might have something like Mustang magic. You know, it'd be something like that. Mustang magic. Like what makes Mustang magic? Okay? Hawkeye heart. Play with great purpose and passion. And the people that came to our team and I had asked them, I was like, what did you like most about our team? I loved the passion and how hard and how, how much enthusiasm your team played with and how hard they played. They never quit. What did I ask coaches when they came and played against us? They would say things like, I, I never was safe with, I never felt comfortable with a lead because your kids never, ever quit. They always kept plugging away. Is that, nice? Is that not a nice thing to say about you if you're on a team? What do you think? It looks like you got banged up there, huh? Yeah, okay. All right. Is it a nice thing to say about you? Wouldn't you like other people, other teams, other uh, people that perform against your pro and the speech club, whatever, to say, wow, 
you guys are just amazing. You just keep working and working and working. You get better all the time. Your performances are even better. Demonstrate gratitude and appreciation. Always appreciate the experiences that you have. Commitment. Be in the now. Okay, so if something bad happened last week or a tough thing happened or a disappointing thing happened last week, what do you have to do about last week? You got to learn from it and you got to move on. You got to move on. So you got to be present right here today. Be present here today. And what's that going to look like? What do I learn? What do I take forward? How am I going to be better today? Be present. That's be in the now. Persevere through the tough times. Be accountable. Take care of your health, your fitness, your academics. There's nothing more frustrating than to have someone who's really, let's say, a very good talent, and they can't participate in a, an event because they didn't take care of their classroom. They didn't take care of their classroom. The first responsibility is taking care of that classroom. And so if you are a friend of someone like that, and you know they're not really good about studying, you can always encourage them to go with you when you're going to study versus allowing them to go out or you know, get on um, social media or spend their time somewhere else. Help them. Be a good friend. Family. All good teams that I ever had really cared about each other. Think for a moment about any great team. Music, FFA, athletics, any organization, any good team you've been a part of, honor society, any really good team you've been a part of, has it been more fun when you really got along and you all cared about each other? Has it? Yeah, it's really special because that's something you take with you for a lifetime. You'll remember your teams. You may not re remember the scores, but you'll remember how people made you feel when you were in that team, and that will be very powerful to you. Do your, ta do your part to make the team better. Now I'm going to use this as an example for athletics. If you're on an athletic team and there's let's say 15 members of your team, there's 15 people on that team, and you know that you were the last person selected, which may mean that maybe in terms of talent from 1 to 15, you might not be the most talented player. Are, here's the question for you, are you still important to the team? Yes or no? How? Who said yes? I heard it. Emphatic yes. Who said that? Who said it? Come on. I heard somebody. You said it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you were emphatic about it because I heard a yes. Okay. Are you on a team? Yes. Okay. What are you on? Football and wrestling. Okay. All right. So I made a comment about 1 through 15, if that would be the case. So everybody's important to the team? Absolutely. All right. So what we think about, like, let's say in the wrestling room. I watched wrestling at Iowa, which happens to be pretty awesome, right? Pretty decent. They were right down the hallway, so I knew Coach Gable and Coach Brands and all those guys really well. And yet they would tell you that only maybe, I don't know how many weight classes there are, but those guys get to perform. But every day in the weight room, someone's in there for them to have to compete. Yes? And that person drives. And maybe that person never gets on the mat. But if it wasn't for that person, these guys wouldn't be anywhere as good. All right, so it's so very important to realize, even though maybe you don't get what you personally want, which is a lot of playing time or you know, more recognition, as long as your coaches value and your teammates value, being a part of that team is important. That's why I hope all of you choose to find teams. Whatever your love is, whatever it might be, find a team because it's such a great way to connect with people. Okay, five qualities of great teams. This goes across all of your organizations. Let's just take a look at them. These are things that should be a part of what you build for your team every day. Trust. Good conflict. You think conflict is good? We'll talk about it. Commitment, accountability, and collective good of the team. Some of this will look very similar. Now you're going to start to see some pictures of each other. You know, it'll be fun to see these up here. Trust. You know, sometimes... We have to show we're vulnerable. And here was a great example that I used earlier about an athletic uh, situation. And you can do this. I really believe you could do this in band, too. Okay, who's in the band? Okay, one of you. You can put your hands down. One of you. What happens when someone, um, we'll go with a smaller group, maybe uh, jazz, jazz band, is that smaller? 
Okay? All right, what happens if someone, I'm going to ask you, okay, what's your name? What's your name? Yep, I'm looking right at you. All right, Ryan. Ryan? Okay, Ryan, what happens if someone just really gets off key? Ryan? Okay, it kind of messes some stuff up, doesn't it? So, being, you know what, and, and maybe, maybe it was you, Ryan. Maybe it was you that day. I'll just pick on you. Is that okay? All right, okay. So, maybe it was Ryan that day. So you know what would be good to do after the performance is over? Because we do this with athletics. A lot of times we can do it right then. He can't do it because he's, what, what do you play? Drums. Okay. So he can't, he can't do this in the middle of his performance. But maybe afterwards he could say, hey, guys, that was on me. I'm sorry. I, I, got, off, I got off track there a little bit. Athletes do it and can do it. And what's good about it is it takes pressure off of the other people later on. Because maybe someone thinks like, Oh, I did something or whatever. It's just a way to own our responsibility. So if I were an athlete and I made a mistake because we know mistakes happen in a game, one of the things that we taught our athletes to do is just right here. My bad. Now, it doesn't say I'm an awful person, right? It doesn't say you're an awful drummer at all. It doesn't say that. It just says I'm taking ownership. I'm taking responsibility for myself, okay? And if you do that, that's being vulnerable. And you know what? Your teammates, your performers with you, they appreciate that because you took ownership with that. And you didn't pass the buck. You didn't blame it on somebody else. You just took it and you owned it. So that's trust. Good conflict. If you're in a club and you get a chance to maybe make changes within your club and your, and your director is talking to you about something that's going to be different, maybe there's a performance coming up and not everybody in the club gets to go. Hard thing, isn't it? Because that happens sometimes with teams where only so many people get to travel. Okay, so you have a chance to give input. And what's so important is be respectful with each other as you're discussing it. Be respectful. So hear the other person's side. Even if you disagree, hear it. We call that active listening. Like listen to what the person says first before you form an answer on what you're going to say. Listen to them. And then at the end, when everybody had a chance to buy in, everybody had a chance to problem solve, now you buy in because these people in the back that are your teachers and your coaches and your administrators and your directors, they're charged with responsibility to make the final decision. And the most important thing, you have to buy in. You can't walk out of there after that discussion and crab all the way out down the hallway because nothing positive comes out of that. But if you had a chance to have input and the person respectfully listened to you, and they make a decision, even if it's against what you just, commit, you just offered, you still had a chance. Respect it. And realize that that's part of what happens with conflict. That's part of it. Commitment. I would bet without a great team, this doesn't happen, does it? Would you agree? It just goes to show we never work in isolation. We all work together. And we have to have a good team. And we have to have people that believe in us and that are committed to us, that help us achieve the goals that we have set. That's, that's a great accomplishment. Everyone makes the team better. That's your responsibility, guys, no matter what your team is. If your only team at the school is the Mustang team, which is the biggest team, you have a responsibility. Make this a great, positive, respectful school. Make it that. Make it special. So that when you talk with kids who go on to college and say, wow, I never went to a school like that, people diss each other all the time. It was really, it was nasty. Like, not our school, not where I grew up. That's just not the way, that's not the independence way. That's not the way we do things here. Accountability. Take responsibility for your actions. Avoiding placing blame. There's that, you know, own your, own your, own your uh, situation. And cooperate and pitch in. You know, cooperate and pitch in. Focus on the collective good of the team. We always put the team first. Focus on it. Team members put the team needs and results first. Team members share openly and respect each other. And there's going to sometimes need to be, we sometimes need to be flexible because what happens if in our football team here, someone goes down or coach thinks that someone else needs to be in that position and there's a change. And how important it is to respect and to be open to the fact that there are going to be changes in all of the organizations that you work in. I'm sure your, your teachers have gone through change just within um, 
putting a, a teaching staff together from year to year. There's always change, and we have to embrace that and be open to it in order to make our school be as good as it can be. Okay, what about your school? I looked at these pictures online, and I don't know if you've ever looked at your YouTube video of when your school was first built. How many of you have looked at it? Shame on you. You need to look at that. Yeah, your, your teachers looked at it. That was your school right there, guys. That big old hole? That was your school. Isn't that kind of neat to see? Like, when you walk through it now, like, doesn't your heart just swell with pride? Mine did. When I came into your school, I was like, wow, impressive. That was your school. And this school, guys, got built by lots of caring people, by your community with bonds, by the people who came out and were actually on site, all the decisions that had to be made, everybody. There was a ton of input and a ton of help getting this amazing school built. Pretty fun. I recognize that a little bit more, don't you? It's starting to look a little more familiar to you, doesn't it? Not just a hole in, in the ground anymore. Showing off the, the locker pods. Uh, you know, the outside of the school, not quite put together, but getting there. Your gymnasium. Wow, 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 wow. When I walked in this auditorium tonight, I have not seen an auditorium like this in a high school. Very impressive. And there's your school. And if you've never taken the time, sometime you ought to just step up to that board and read that. All stars, significant contributors, honorable mention. Everybody in your community is not on that. And everybody did help build this place. So there's so many people to thank. When I was at Iowa, you saw the picture of the stadium. When I first went there, there was no stadium. It was just a field, and the bleachers were little, you know, the little low bleachers. And then we eventually got the stadium built. So I committed to being a part of that entire project. And we only had to raise, at that time, uh, $1.2 million, which is enough money. But you know, at that time, that's all we had to raise. And I remember the work that went into that. It was nothing of the magnitude of your school. So stop and think about all the time that people put in to creating a really special place for you all to have, a great school for you to have. Social media. I don't even have to ask this question, but I'll ask it anyway. How many of you have at least one social media account? Hands up. Some of your hands are like this, like you don't want to acknowledge it. You got, okay, how many have two? Look around, co uh, teachers, coaches. <laughs> How many have three? Whoa, four? Wow, okay. We, I don't have enough time. We'll go on. All right. Woke you up, didn't I? Because we know that this is a place that you spend a lot of time. Yes? Maybe at times too much time. All right. So these are just some of the faces, right? There's just some. There's, everything's not up here. I know that. Yeah? And see, they're all pointing. They're all pointing at various ones. Yes. All right. Here's what's important to know. Here's what's important to know about social media. Because you spend so much time on it. You have the perfect opportunity to brand yourselves. You have the perfect opportunity to brand yourself. What do I mean by branding yourself? Who wants to help me? What's branding look like? What do you think? Somebody tell me. What do you think? It's going to be with you. Even if you choose to take it down at some point in time, once you throw it out there, it's out there, right? Okay, so that's branding. What else? How about if you do the three things that are up here? You have a chance by branding yourself to create a positive identity. Positive. So that involves taking a little bit of time when you decide to post or tweet or put a picture up. Is it a positive statement about you? You have a chance to preserve your reputation, or you have a chance to dismantle it, if that's what you want. And you have a chance to build a future. And your high school, and your future is now. It's now. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, that, it's good that picture's a little fuzzy, because it's not a very complimentary picture. It doesn't really speak positively of the people that are in the picture. Facebook policy. And you all probably know this. Even after you delete it, they own it. Did you know that? They own you. They own your picture. It's no longer yours. And how long does it take for someone to hit a screenshot of what you've just posted? Five seconds. 
gone. Not just in your community, across the country, gone. Okay? Not cool. Let's go back there for a second. I missed something at the top. Not cool, the stuff on the top. And one of the areas that we have problems in our country, and I hope that we do not have this in this community, is cyberbullying. The number of people that are put under great pressure because of things that people post about them. Cyberbullying. Degrading others, sexually explicit pics, pictures of drinking, partying, being wild, crazy. Not cool. Just remember, they stay up. You put them up, they're there. All right, preserve your reputation. I love this picture. Anybody in this picture? Yeah? Way cool. Way cool. Is it not a neat picture? I love it. Spirit walk through the elementary school. What a great way to connect the elementary kids to you all. And they need to know you. And you need to help them learn how to be a better Mustang. That's part of your responsibility. Demonstrate respect to them, and they can, they can watch you and leave you. They see everything you do. So if they go to one of your concerts or something, and they see you do something that's probably not the best thing to do, before you know it, it'll show up in something that they're involved in. Or they go to a team, and they watch, or they hear you do something or say something. Those behaviors get repeated. Nothing disappears online. That's the most important thing to remember, nothing. Your tweets, your posts, your pictures, your language, everything stays up there forever. And what you do, you're pres is it preserving your reputation? And here's another one. Is it preserving your Mustang school reputation? Or does it reflect badly on your school? All right. This is powerful. Who hopes to someday go to college? Hands up. Yep. All right. Lots of hands up. Okay. Never let a 140-character tweet cost you an opportunity. It might be a scholarship. It might be admission to a school that you really want to go to. Never allow those things to stand in the way of potentially costing you something that you really, really want to do in your life. What should you do? Good examples here. Let's say you're on Twitter and you see someone puts a negative post up about your school or about your team or about one of your best friends. What do you do? Okay. Do you just fire it back right at them? Back at you? Might make you feel okay, but then it's out there. It's out there. And it stays out there. And, and it, go back to the branding, it becomes part of your reputation. All right. What happens if you're angry? This is one of, uh, uh, teachers, I'm sure you probably think this way too. Aren't you glad that t social media wasn't around when you were a kid? When I think about how easy it is to put stuff up now, and I think, yeah, well, I can remember being mad at people, but we never had things to go to to post that. We just got over it. But now, if your first knee-jerk reaction is to go, Whoa, and tweet it back, so mad at mom this morning, she wouldn't let me go out last week, and ugh, it's out there. You can't take it back. And so it's so very important to make sure that you think before you ever post. Rule your reputation. This was fun because this was another school in the community, and they just put things up on their Facebook page or on their Twitter page, and it just showed them supporting their community. These are wonderful images to see things that you do for your community, to make your, that reflect very positively on who you are. Build a future. How many of you are working right now? Have jobs? Okay, how many of you are looking for jobs? Maybe like find a job. Okay, all right, so you put a resume together, right? Put a resume together, all right? Your employers, your coaches, even admissions directors and lots of club people, they go on and look at social media profiles to get a more complete picture of you. So, you see this football coach over here. We dropped a recruit last, last week because of his Twitter. We're, we were ready to offer and we saw something he posted done. And then someone wrote back to him, and, he, and he's responding to that Fairhaven High School. He says, thank you. Just trying to let them know the internet is not a place to put whatever you want up without consequences. Very important. Jobs get lost because, and when I was at Iowa, and we had young students, these were not athletes, applying for internships in the athletic department, many of them said um, their friends were overlooked because of things that were put on their 
their Twitter page, their social media pages, that their friends were overlooked, that they decided no because of, of actions that they saw. This guy down here just got a job offer, and he goes on and tweets about it, and he says, don't know if I really want that fat paycheck to work for, uh, to commute to San Jose for a job I hate. What would you do if you were the boss hiring that guy? File and move on to the next person. That person would lose that job because we all have a chance. I can remember, uh, again, social media was not, you know, Facebook and those things were up and going, but there weren't as many social media opportunities. But I remember having a phone call with a recruit one time, and I heard her say, it was noisy in the background, and she got off the phone. She says, hold on just a minute, coach. She turns around and she says, mom, shut up. I'm talking to a coach. What do you think I did? The very next phone call, I let her know we had made another decision. We just moved on. I, I didn't need that person in our program. Someone who's going to disrespect their parents, I'm not going to recruit that person. I want people that understand respect, that live it in their daily lives. So that's real important. It wasn't a Twitter, it wasn't a tweet, but it was a very obvious example of what she valued. Facebook, put good stuff up. Your pictures of your friends, you know, fun time you had in a good situation, put it up. Twitter, tweet good stuff. I love the first one. Guy's got a mom that's been in the hospital. He thanks his friends and, and people for reaching out and helping. We've all been in those situations, and that's where, that's what's really amazing. I have a young woman that I coached at Iowa who just recently went over, under, underwent a double mastectomy. The Facebook blew up supporting her. Blew up. So it was good stuff. People sending prayers and thoughts and with her. And she's come through it and she's doing well. And it's a great way to reach out. So it's not all bad. It's what we choose to do with it. That's the most important thing. It's what you choose to do with it. Told my mom. I love the last one. Told my mom she could have my cap. My grandma could have my gown. It must have been a guy that didn't know if he was going to graduate. What do you think? Maybe they didn't know if he was going to make it. But he made it. And they're proud of him. And he's proud of himself. And that became his Mother's Day gift to his grandmother and to his mom. Pretty neat. One bad tweet can cost you, it can be very costly to you for a student athlete. So obviously it could be if you were going to, into a prestigious school and you were maybe in music or you were, you're a really outstanding academic student and you have a chance for scholarship opportunities. One bad tweet can be very costly. Pause. Pause and think about, is this... Does this really reflect positively? Okay, Instagram. This is how Instagram can help your future. When you apply for jobs, you uh, make an application to go to college, whatever it might be. Your resume, your application tells a story about you. Then what you got to do is make sure that your Instagram matches that. Because now more and more schools are looking at social media to see if what they get in the applications matches up. And if your story's here on your paper, and way over in left field on your Instagram may not be a match. And it might be a rejection because of that. You decide. Helpful or hurtful? Look at them. Helpful or hurtful? See a lot of things there probably aren't terribly complimentary. Helpful or hurtful? You get both, don't you? Helpful? The guy on the right has a problem. I'm sorry, the guy on the left. Or hurtful. I would say that's hurtful, hurtful, hurtful. Right? Hurtful. Helpful or hurtful? Pretty cool stories. Friends. And so if I were looking at you and I was trying to get a feel for you, I'd say, wow, he or she is pretty well connected. Good friends. Looks like they're doing some really good things. That matches up with that resume that I'm looking at. I'm watching. Okay, that's good. So, before you put anything up, you've got to stop and think, guys. Just take a second to think. Because once it's up there and it leaves your phone, it's for everybody. It's out there. 
And you say, well, I, you know, on Facebook, I have friends. You know what? If your friend hits it and likes it, it goes somewhere else and someone else sees it. And before you know it, it could be lots of places you had not intended it to be. Think, is it true? Is it helpful? Does it inspire? Is it necessary? Is it kind? If we could pull all the trash off of social media, social media would be an incredible platform. I really believe that. It's an incredible platform. We just have to learn how to use it well. Okay, do you see this is summer? You know what this is? Olympics? How powerful. How many of you watched? Okay, yeah. And I had to stay up, and I don't know, that's probably not late for you, but for me, lots of nights were late. And I was like, like this, trying to watch the competition. But I wanted to see them. I wanted to see them live. I didn't want to see them the next day. I wanted to watch them. So I watched so many things. And weren't they amazing? Wow. I mean, weren't they just absolutely amazing? The swimming, the gymnastics, the basketball, volleyball, um, you know, just so many. Equestrian, there were so many things that were amazing to watch. It was so fun. And I don't know how it made you feel, but it made me really proud to be an American. I felt, you know, kind of like my heart swelled. And I never coached any of these people, but I understood what they took, what it took to get there, and how hard the training is, and the sacrifice that they have to make. I understood all that. I understood it because you do that. You do that in music. You do that in FFA. You do it in sports. You do it in so many things. There's a tremendous amount of sacrifice. And wasn't she fun to watch? And didn't you feel for her when she fell the one time? The one time off the balance beam? Because it was, you know, you train forever and you just have one slip. That happens, but they were so much fun. Basketball, it was so much fun to watch them. And this woman here in the volleyball, in the sand volleyball, she's 40 years old. Who would ever dream that she'd be an athlete that long? That's old, people. It's, yeah, your, your teachers are all laughing. It's not old. For an athlete, that's old. For us, I'd be okay if I was 40 right now. I'd be all right. I'd still be coaching. All right, but it was just really fun. And it was fun to celebrate with them, with all of their victories. And then we had a fall. We had a big fall. We had a big crash. Ryan Lochte, remember the story? How many of you knew the story? You saw the story? Yes? And it was a big story. It was a big fall. And I thought about that many times. I'm thinking, here was an amazing swimmer with unbelievable honors, unbelievable commercial sponsorship, a really nice life, and one mistake one mistake. And you know, what's, here's what I want to say about that. We all make mistakes. His mistake was not in owning his mistake. Instead of fabricating the story that he fabricated, if he could have just said, I made a mistake. I went out there. We went out to the party. I took three teammates. We came back. We stopped at the bathroom. I destroyed some property, and I am sorry. If he would have stopped right there, what would have happened? He, he would have been forgiven. Absolutely. He would have had some little bit of repercussion, but nothing. Nothing. Did you watch Dancing with the Stars the other night? Did anybody watch that? What happened on stage? Did you see that on the news? Two people had shirts on that said Lochte with a cross through it because they, they were upset with what he chose to do. So here's the point. We all make mistakes. Own your mistakes. Instead of making up something, own it and deal with it and move on. And that's all he needed to do. There's a fun little story I'm going to have you look at. Quick little video here. We'll finish with this. It's in another language, Chinese, so I will tell you if you can't see the clips on the bottom. Watch the guy in the background shake his head like I can't believe he's giving his dinner away. Woman on the street with her child asking for money for education. And another person going, wow, I can't believe he's doing that. A neighbor. 
What does he get in return for this deed every day? There you are. She's waiting for him to come and help her. And the dog doesn't forget him. And he has one bill. Watch the little girl. She doesn't want to take it. And he gives it to her. Offers his seat. He gets nothing, but I disagree with that. He gets a lot. He won't be richer. He won't appear on TV. He's still anonymous. And not a bit more famous. Watch this dog. He's got a friend for life now. The little girl's gone. Mom. And there she is. She's in school. Her dream. What does he receive? He receives emotions. He witnesses happiness. He reaches a deeper understanding. He feels the love. Receives what money cannot buy. The world made more beautiful. And in your life, what is it that you most desire? Pretty cool, huh? And I'll leave you with this last slide. Respect. Take it right back to the beginning. It begins with you and with me. Thank you.